Hi there, Ollie. Hi. Hi. And Southampton unbeaten in seven, three points off the top of the table. Just how tough a test is this going to be for your side? Yeah, we know it's going to be a difficult one. They've done uh, really well uh, since, well, if you look back, if you look over uh, almost like a 30, 40 uh, game block, they're, they're one of the top, uh, top teams. So um, th they've made great improvement. So we know how difficult this game is going to be. We drew twice against them last season. So um, it's uh, for us a point to uh, that we uh, there's uh, games that we can make improvement on. Do you think the challenges of the fixture schedule, especially for the clubs like yourself that are in Europe, give other teams? a chance outside of the top six to, to improve this season and perhaps get into that top four, top five? Yeah, I think this season is going to be a, a very unpre unpredictable one. So, uh, yeah, of course, there's sometimes advantages by uh, having a full week of training. Uh, but we want to be in the Champions League, so I'd rather be there and face the, the congestion uh, rather than not having them, of course. So, uh, that's just a situation that we uh, have to get used to and make the most of. Carl Anker. Hi, Oli. Carl Anker from The Athletic here. Um, could we get an update on team news? Uh, yeah, uh, Scott and Paul, they, haven't, they didn't train this morning. Uh, or wasn't, they were not on the grass, so they look like they're very unlikely for the weekend. Uh, Marcus, Victor, Aaron, they... They came through the session today, so hopefully they should be okay. Uh, still not 100%. Um, Luke has just started his rehab uh, out on the grass, not with the team yet. Jesse is back from his isolation period, so he's back with the, with the groups, had a couple of days training. And apart from that, Phil Jones is still uh, out until uh, probably after, after Christmas sometime. Uh, Bert Carlson? Yes, how are you? Hi. Jeg vet at jeg på norsk, eller? Spørsmålet. Ja, vi, det kan jeg gjøre. Uh, altså, Mason Greenwood, han uh, tok jo Manchester United og supporteren med storm i fjor, og så har han vært under litt kritikk i år og hatt noen vanskelige episoder, uh, og blitt beskyldt både for det ene og det andre på, på sosiale medier. Altså, tror du folk innimellom nå har en tendens å glemme at fotballspillere også er, er bare mennesker, han er jo bare 19 år gammel gutten, så at det går litt opp og ned, vel, kanskje, og får vint? Sorry, guys. It's uh, that was a question in Norwegian. That's fine. Uh, it, it was about Mason. Um, I'll answer it in Norwegian, and then uh, I can translate into uh, English after. Uh, det er, uh, vi uh, prøver å hjelpe alle spillere våre, om de er gamle eller unge, og det er mer erfaring du har, til større sjanser har du selvfølgelig til å til å unngå å uh, gjøre en annen feil, men uh, jeg, har noe, uh, jeg har ikke noe med problem med å hjelpe unge gutter og prøve å uh, hjelpe dem til å bli uh, gode fotballspillere, og Mason er en veldig, veldig god fotballspiller. The answer was just about Mason, and uh, uh, we've got a tradition of helping, helping young kids uh, develop, go through the ranks. Uh, some, there'll, there'll be... Uh, uh, there'll be uh, times, of course, when you have difficult periods, uh, even when you're a young player or a, you're an experienced player. And uh, as a club, we have a good tradition and history of helping players through difficult periods, as well as good periods, to, to kick them on. Hi, Oli. Uh, just in terms of team news and, and, and you know, players that can play, Donny and Edinson have both played, obviously, the full game on the other night. Uh, are they in the condition to be able to start if you choose them tomorrow? Yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, I think, you know, it's been very... Uh, we played on Tuesday, then we don't have a game until uh, <laughs> until Sunday. So it's been a long, uh, long period for us. We managed to give the, day, the boys one day off as well uh, in this difficult time. So, yeah, they, they both will be av they're available to play and I'm sure I if they do, they, uh, they're capable of, uh, of uh, playing again. Trafford because we're in tier three in Manchester, but there will be fans next week at West Ham. First, you know, what, what impact do you think? And, and, and is it kind of a sign of some light at the end of a big tunnel? Yeah, I think so. Very pleased that we are making the progress and that we can uh, 
let the fans in uh, gradually. Of course, we we can't wait to, uh, to see our own fans uh, at Old Trafford, and we, we know how imp how uh, long they've been waiting to be there and watch the games live. So steps in in the right direction, uh, and uh, we're pleased. Even even though we have a, uh, we're the away team, it's still creating an atmosphere in the game. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Samuel Lopez. Hi, Oli. Just to clarify, um, Paul had problems with his ankle last season. You said he's got an ankle injury at the moment. Is is that related to his issues last season, or is this a, a separate issue? Separate issue, yeah. Okay, could I talk, hand up if you want the next question? Andy Mitten. Hi, Oli. Hi. When you started out as a manager when you were... 13 you named your first team after Diego Maradona how are yeah. you it's uh, it was a sad day and uh, for me uh, Diego Maradona will always be uh, uh, the best player that I've seen live I actually I was fortunate enough to see him play for Argentina against Norway in uh, in Oslo they lost one nil before the World Cup uh, I actually remember uh, Norwegian lad, Kjetil Oswald, uh, nutmegging him, which I thought was uh, fantastic. And after the game, I was stood outside the ground waiting to get a glimpse of him, and I actually touched his uh, shoulder as he walked past the crowd. And uh, since then, I've had the pleasure of meeting him at Old Trafford, and uh, uh, a guy with unbelievable talent on the pitch, and uh, uh, a smile always when uh, when you see him. Uh, so I've got to say it was a sad day, and um, for me he, he will be the best that's uh, ever played football. Simon Stone. Holly, um, you've won three in a row. It's a long time uh, since you won four in a row after your you took over. Are these the kind of games that you really need to win to to prove you're on the right track in terms of getting the club back to where it wants to be rather than just scrambling to try and get in the Champions League? Yeah, of course, we, we want that uh, run to continue. and with, But we know how, how well uh, Southampton have done uh, recently uh, or lately, the last year or so. Uh, still, we have a very good away record, and I think we are up there as well uh, since, yeah, the turn of the turn of January. You know, when we had some ins and outs transfers, I think that was a big turning point for us. So since then, we've been pushing up the table, and depending on how many games you look back, I think we're getting that consistency. And uh, of course, we uh, we know that this is a. A nice challenge and a good test for the for the team now to see if we've really uh, learned our lessons against the uh, from the games we played against them uh, the last season. Alex Crook, Oli, you mentioned January there um, with the fixture congestion that's been well documented and the truncated nature of the season. Do you think this January will be busier in general for Premier League clubs in terms of signings and and for Manchester United in particular? Well, it's hard to predict how other teams will, how the financial situation is. If teams need to sell or if they've got money to to buy, I don't uh, predict a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ins and outs. To be fair, I think the world uh, financially and the football world uh, has changed as well. So uh, it depends on how uh, how uh, the injury situations are at different teams. I feel very happy with my squad at the moment. We're we're getting stronger. I still have issues every week uh, when we only got an 18-man squad to pick from. Uh, who do I leave out? So um, I feel I'm in a good position. Hi, Oli. Um, Bru Bruno obviously had a, another great game for you in midweek. Uh, I think on the Facebook page, a lot of fans were saying he's the best signing since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. Uh, I know managers are loath to make comparisons, but can he be to this team what Ronaldo was to, to this Man United team? In terms of his inspiration, because I think it's 34. He's been involved in 34 goals in 35 appearances. I mean, he's got that kind of presence and, and inspirational qualities, hasn't he? 
Yeah, he, he does definitely have that presence and he has an influence and impact on, on his teammate. We can just look at the, the results that we've had since he's come in. And he's got loads of energy, he's got leadership, he's a team player, which is the key here now for, uh, for us going forward. Some players will have to sit uh, games out and rest. Um, I wasn't looking forward to telling Bruno when he, uh, he was resting against Leipzig, but it was absolutely no problem. Uh, same with Marcus, to be, uh, to be fair, because they know this season is, uh, is challenging. And uh, that's how we build this team and this, uh, the culture of the team, that it's about the team, not the individuals. And I think Bruno has proven that uh, over and over, that it's the team before I. Neil? Yeah, sorry. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Um, Ollie, just the, the way uh, Marcus and Anthony played so well the other night um, in those wide positions, is there a temptation for you to try and give Marcus a run down the middle with those two wide, given that he is the most instinctive finisher? Uh, did you mean... Did you mean Edison through the middle or Marcus? Because Mason, Mason through the middle. Mason, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, the game against Istanbul, they had the spaces that we felt was going to suit that setup. So that's always when you look into the games, you look at your own team, but also how the opposition set up. And I think that game suited Marcus on the right, uh, Anthony uh, in the middle. Mason can definitely develop into top number nine. Uh, he has one of the uh, the top number nines of the of world football the last 10 years to learn from now as well, Edinson. That goes for both Anthony and him and Marcus. So Edinson's come in and pr uh, shown uh, a different way of playing as a number nine that we've had at the club for a while. So they, they can learn off him, definitely. Uh, and uh, But they're all capable of playing in all those positions, which is also a, a nice, uh, nice skill to have. Okay, last question from Karl Anker. Hi, Oli, me again. Um, uh, just yeah. want to talk a little bit, just want to talk a little bit about Southampton. They're a team with a very pronounced tactical shape and a plan. Um, what's the challenge when you play against a team that has such a well-known physical element to it? Yeah, it's it's similar to when uh, Jurgen came to uh, to Liverpool. Is is the German coach who likes uh, pressing front foot, uh, aggressive, uh, which is, of course, um, more difficult to play against if you, if you dwell on the ball, uh, they, if they because they set traps, very very uh, interesting to watch. Uh, the progress that Southampton's made under uh, under uh, Ralph, uh, so um, you know that you're in the game for the 96, 97 minutes they scored against us last year. In the 96th minute, I think the first goal they scored against us as well at Old Trafford showed uh, what they are capable of. When you make a mistake in uh, in midfield, they pounced and counter attack and scored. So. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big admirer of that type of, uh, of physical attributes that he has in his team.